Hello there. So apparently I am a brown coat now because I am reacting to Fireplay. Unfortunately, I could not find anything brown in my attire or my clothing wear. So you're going to have to settle with my orange Netherlands kit for today. Hey, orange, little bit of color of the desert, depending which desert you're at. Let's just say we're at Mars since it's the show. Uh, we're in space, galaxy, outer rims, etc. But yeah, you're going to have to settle the Netherlands kit for today. What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Ellie Moses, your 22-year-old law and field chef, Sydney, Australia, shooting his shot, baby. And today... We are up to episode two of Firefly titled The Train Job. Now, I had no idea that actually the first episode I watched, Serenity, which seemed like a double header mini movie type thing, was not the first episode that aired, I believe. I believe the studio execs uh, from the comment section that I read that um, didn't want to air this episode and didn't believe it was a good like first episode pilot. Um, but this is the way Joss intended it to be. So I'm glad I watched it that way. That's the way it is on Disney Plus, actually. It's Serenity, then episode two, The Train Job, then Bushwhack, then uh, uh, Shine Dig, and then etc. We continue going on. But yeah, that's the order it's in on Disney Plus. That's the way I am going to be watching it. And hopefully it is the right way. I'm glad I watched Serenity first. And apparently I'm going to decide after this one um, which episode is the better pilot. Because apparently this is like meant to be the other pilot episode so i guess we'll find out and get to see uh whether there's any sort of rehashes of certain character traits or subtle hints in terms of our characters that were set up in serenity episode because i know you guys pinpointed um malcolm reynolds losing his faith with the cross um when he sort of mocked the sort of saying grace at the table whereas at the beginning of the film he was a man of faith kissing the cross now I don't know if he lost faith because of that incident at the beginning um, involving the war, or it must have been some miraculous, not miraculous, but some sort of catastrophic event for him to lose faith. But I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. I'm interested to see. I love the world building in the first episode. You get subtle hints. Joss Whedon, I feel like, does that really well. Um, and if you pay close attention, you sort of get a sense of what the world has come to, or what the galaxy has come to, and where certain areas are more deprived and where certain areas, you know, are more, I guess, developed and are more advanced. So, yeah, this is the train job episode two. Let's get right into it. Let's slay this reaction. All right, so right before we get into the reaction, thank you for all the new subscribers that came because of Firefly from the last episode. Now, just to give you a little heads up on my reaction style um those that uh already been subscribed to the channel know my reaction uh style i obviously do the normal reactions you know if something happens on screen you have the normal reactions like the one word comment but because i'm a film student as well um i like to pause at points and give my thoughts on certain camera angles shots and stylistic choices i enjoy and things that are noticeable to hopefully um make you guys learn as well and you guys help me learn in the comment section as well and obviously to comment on certain stories did uh tidbits as well and story certain story elements and pausing actually helps not miss out on certain points of dialogue as well within the show so hopefully you guys understand that after the earth was used up we found a new solar system and hundreds of new earths were terraformed and colonized oh the central planets formed the alliance okay decided all the planets had to join under their rule there were sons of the group on that point after the war, many of the independents who had fought and lost drifted to the edges of the system, far from Alliance control. Out here, people struggled to get by with the most basic technologies. A ship would bring you work. A gun would help you keep it. <laughs> the captain's goal was simple. Find a crew, find a job. Keep flying. I don't know. I feel like that... After watching the first episode, especially... Um, I feel like I'm treated a little bit dumb right there. Like, I get this was meant to be, um, the pilot that aired, um, instead of the last episode. So, uh, people would have seen this first, but yeah, I kind of felt dumb a bit there and I didn't need that. Cause like, obviously if the audience is smart and pay close attention, um, they would understand the world building and what's going up. And that's what I liked about the first episode. Um, you pick up the little hints as you go and you sort of understand the world for yourself. Um, and Joss Whedon is basically saying um, in the first episode, he understands that the audience isn't dumb and they can figure it out for themselves, but he uses little tidbits and little clues here and there. For instance, such as Kaylee eating the strawberry. You understand the situation where certain crops are becoming scarce in the outer rim planets. And it's just like, the audience is not dumb. And they can figure it out for themselves. Mm. 
You want to drink your lions with me? This year today, the lions sent the brown coats running. Who hey, 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 hey. Pants. <laughs> <laughs> the brown coats are my boys. Uh, your coat is kind of a brownish color. It was on sale. <laughs> you didn't know. You know, I'm thinking you want them independence. And I'm thinking you were burdened with an overabundance of schooling. So why don't we just ignore each other till we go away? Independence, you're a bunch of cowardly, inbred piss pots. Should have been killed off of every world spinner. This guy's asking for it. Say that to my face. I said, you're a coward and a piss pot. Now what are you gonna do about it? Nothing. I just want you to face me so she could get behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, seems like Jane a whole Jane bar Jane. is Jane? maybe pro alliance. <laughs> Best of luck, though. Boy, let's do this. Wash, we got some local color happening. Oh, just would not go amiss. I, I I love that framing right there. You know, like it was probably unnecessary. Um like it didn't need to be there but i enjoyed the framing there um with malcolm sort of in the right hand frame of the shot and the whole left side is occupied by the outer space sky but then in the background as well there's planets occupying that as well and it's just like it doesn't need to be there but it's it's, it's great at establishing some sort of like world building and the galaxy as well and it's just like it sets the tone for it being a space western as well like it could have had a normal background sky drop right there but no we had other planets in that and occupying the whole left side of the frame as malcolm is in the right hand side of the frame i i really enjoyed that i don't know why it was just a shot for about three four seconds but hey it just sets the tone for what the show is and it's really great Isn't there? This is why we lost you. Know. Superior numbers. <laughs> good, sir. I'm thinking somebody needs to put you down, dog. What do you think? I'm thinking we'll rise again. <laughs> Every man there, go back inside, or we will blow a new crater in this little moon. Can't even tell a transport ship ain't got no guns on it. <laughs> Blow a new crater in this moon. <laughs> it's me. I I I get how they're weaving in sort of fragments of the first episode. Like if you missed the first episode or like if the first episode didn't air, um, I actually like knowing, I actually enjoy seeing the first episode first, the intended first episode first, then watching this, seeing what elements Joss took with from that to insert into this as a first pilot, you know, to get sort of an understanding of what the characters are. You know, at the beginning, Kaylee said, are the passengers are okay? Then they dealt with that. I I think she's, it was Kaylee or one of the other characters said of the passengers. So you understand the carrying passengers and you got Simon here and then River sort of like with sort of like a flashback sequence right there of people doing experimenting on her, which is what we told uh, happened to River last episode. So yeah, I like how Joss inserts like those little story elements um, that obviously weren't allowed to air because of the first episode into this one. You know who I am? Simon. Were you dreaming? You were dreaming about the academy. It's not relevant. If you can talk about what happened there. And I know it's hard, but the more I know, the faster you'll get better. This isn't home. No. No, we can't go home. 
you go home, they'll just send you back to the academy. This is safer now. Need for transport. Standard radio and accelerator core class code zero three dash K six four. Five four. Well, that's something. I can't even remember all that. <laughs> Did you read on that? Nothing. I expect there's someone's face feels differently. And I tell you, never hit a man with a closed fist, but it is on occasion hilarious. Mm. I suppose so. No. Bad. Not bad, I'd say mysterious. <laughs> Well, what about you, Shepard? How come you're flying about with us brigands? I mean, you should be offering in religiosity with fuzzy wuzzies or some such. Oh, I got feelings of plenty right here. See, if I'm your mission, Shepard, best give it up. You're welcome on my boat. God ain't. <laughs> what the hell's that girl? There's an energy about a person that's difficult to hide. You try to feel that. And then you try to feel the energy of their credit account. It has a sort of aura. What did I say to you about barging into my shuttle? That it was manly and impulsive? Yes, precisely. Only the exact phrase I used was don't. Well, you're holding my mechanic in thrall. And Kaylee, what the hell's going on in the engine room? Where did my wife go? Some terrifying space monkeys maybe got loose? I had to rewire the grav thrust because somebody won't replace that crappy compression coil. Well, get the place squared away. It's dangerous in there, and I ain't paying you to get your hair played out. We work before we play. My name is Ben. I'm from Earth. Run by a fella called Niska. Never heard of him. Well, I have. And while we're there, you'll stay confined to the ship. I thought you said he flew in with you, James, to show you that he's riding with a companion. This guy has a very unlovely rep. He's got work for me, fine. But I don't, I'm not sure you can say anything. Wow, well, for being a gentleman, I may die of shock. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know more of the- time to do my hair? Out. <laughs> I want to know more of the history between Mal and Inara. Um, and I need to understand this companion stuff more. Obviously, last episode, he called her a whore, but it seems to be more of that, like more than that, sorry, not more of that, but more than that. Um, and it seems like she just like tags along with her shuttle being a separate compartment of the ship as she's like sort of attached to it. And I guess as they go to different worlds, um, she's just there as like a service or for passengers, is it? Is that how it works with the client thing, uh, with the companion thing? I need to understand it a bit more, a bit lost on that part. Oh, damn, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> they can come in. I also have a reputation not so pleasant, I think you know. Grow. Damn, hung up now like the predator. My reputation is not from gossip. You see this man, uh, he does not do the job. <laughs> i show you what I do with him. And now my reputation for you is fact. Oh, you do not like a Kurdish man. Hmm. Oh no, I'm sure he was uh, a very bad person. My wife, not me. <laughs> dinner, I'm getting here for. There is no way out of that. So, oh, the train job. Tell me. Here in this car, two boxes, a lion's good. Uh, you don't mind uh, taking from a lion's, I think, from your reputation. If anything goes wrong, then your reputation only gossip and things between us not so solid. Yes. <laughs> I kind of said it last episode, but this show really kind of reminds me of it's like a mixture of a blend between Star Wars and Terminator, for example, with like Terminator incorporating sort of like the independence and the resistance, like sort of fighting back um, and a previous war that's happened. And the Star Wars thing comes with obviously the Alliance sort of being like the Empire. 
And it kind of reminds me of the Star Wars cartoon show Rebels, which is one of my favorite pieces of Star Wars content, where you have like a rebel uh, crew made up from different sort of uh, races and individuals. Um, they weren't a family before, and now they're a family together. And you have the captain, um, and they go on these sort of heist missions and supply runs, and their overarching fight is against the Empire. Um, and it kind of does remind me of that. And I, I love Star Wars Rebels. So that's the vibes I'm getting off here, and I'm liking it. I'm really liking it. Oh, this is gonna be easy. Light work. I was gonna get through some alliance shoulders. Right. <laughs> I've been on this ship eight months now. I'm not certain I'll ever actually know the captain. <laughs> like I said, most mysterious character. I'm surprised a respectable companion would sail with this crew. It's not always this sort of work. They take the jobs they can get, even legitimate ones. Planets, the harder things are, so this is part of it. I do feel awful for the folks on board. You could always pray they make it back safely. <laughs> I don't think the captain would much like me praying for him. Don't tell him. I kind of wish Niska, you know, told him there's going to be heavy alliance presence on this train. <laughs> Or maybe it was assumed. Or well, this compartment is just for transporting a line shoulders, hence the other family being able to get through. Is there some information we might maybe be lacking as there. to why there's an entire bed spread? There we go. <laughs> it kind of concerns me. I mean, they're not protecting the goods. If they were, they wouldn't be letting people past. You don't think that changes the situation a bit? I sure do. Oh, <laughs> Sir. <laughs> You have a problem with your brain being missing. Come on. We stick to the plan. We get the goods. We're back on Serenity before the train even reaches Paradiso. Only now we do it under the noses of 20 trained Alliance beds. And that would be called marriage, stupid. Hell, this job I would pull for free. Well, can I have your share? No. If you die, can I have your share? Yes. <laughs> you can tell already Mal takes satisfaction in sort of um, giving it to the Alliance. And he's even more excited now that they're present on the train. It's gonna, it's gonna make pulling the job off more fulfilling. Hey, doctor. I'm in or out, I'm in charge. When? And just cause Mal says your medic don't make you part of the crew. <laughs> you just play it figuring what's wrong with that moon brain sister of yours till we call for you. Soma? Soprende? <laughs> Typical Jane, man. <laughs> Whenever there's a heist involved, like it always starts off pretty smooth, but you never know. You just know, sorry, it's never going to end smoothly. They're going to run into some trouble. It always does. It always happens. I don't think I've ever seen a heist run smoothly in a film or TV show. <laughs> I could be wrong. Firefly could be the first to do it. Here we go. Too much noise. <laughs> Kind of clever how he set up the smoke screen trap. Going stealthy on this one a little bit. I like it. <laughs> Lucky you have a medic on board. <laughs> you know what? This could have been more, run more smoothly than I thought. You know, you had to only take out one guy and got past the rest and got up at Paradiso, so. And the cargo's already off. Medicine, sir. All of the supplies. Stole the guy ran medicine. Ah. Uh. Been waiting. All of it. Every ounce. 
Oh, <laughs> Bloody Niska. Stole the medicine. <laughs> I ever find those people, they ain't ever gonna see the inside of a jail. I'm just gonna toss them in a mine, let them breathe deep for the rest of their lives. Can't argue with that. Uh, you mind telling me uh, when it was you last spoke to Joey Bloggs? Never did myself. Yeah, your uncle. <laughs> it was indicated to you that uh, Joey had an opening. Any job would do. According to Joey Bloggs, ate his own gun about eight months back. Did he? Yep. Blew the back of his head right off. So, what is his job you reckon? That's it. We waited long enough. Let's get this bird in the air. No running way. You really should sit down. I just leave the captain and Zoe here. They ain't coming. We can't walk in there and get them, so they're done. I was fired up. What's going on? Strap in. We're taking off. We're not. Captain, do the same if you're one of us. Not in a million years. Shut it. Listen to me. You know what the chain of command is? It's a chain I go get and beat you with till you understand who's in rut and command here. And we're finishing this deal. And then maybe, maybe we'll come back for those morons who got themselves <laughs> caught. You can't change that. Getting all bendy. All oh, what? Got the little light from the console. <laughs> yeah. That's the meds kicking in. Lift you up. Down in here. <laughs> Angels. Did he just go crazy and fall asleep? I told him it's Joey. <laughs> was supposed to kick in a good deal sooner. I I just didn't feel comfortable with him in charge. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's so, all right with that. How do we get the others? I guess I'll just waltz in and pull them out. Someone respectable enough might be able to. Yo, Inara? That's all I'm gonna say, Inara. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Don't you dare speak to me. <laughs> Sheriff, I want this man bound by law at once. That's assuming he hasn't been already. No one's been bound. Not yet. I'm glad he stopped then. Did you honestly think he could access my accounts and I wouldn't find you? And Zoe, what would your husband say if he knew you were here? I... I would hate him. <laughs> well, I take it they ain't newlyweds. <laughs> Hardly. Malcolm's my indentured man. With three years left in his debt, I imagine we'll have to add another six months after this little adventure. Gotta keep the role play going. I don't think one of them's ever seen a registered companion before. I apologize for my manner. Not a bit. Should I contact my ship? Do you need to hold them very much longer? It looks to me like we're about done here. Uh, we had some uh, unrelated trouble. His story had kind of an odor to it. Yes. It's not the only thing about him that does. Thank you very much. <laughs> Come along. Damn, it seems like Inara as the companion like had some sort of gravitas there. And yeah, she was able to weave her way in and basically get him out with her story. But um, even the sheriff seemed a bit shocked. I've never seen a registered companion here. And that goes hand in hand with what I was asking before about the companions and like what they are and what sort of um stature they hold in this world oh did not this world but this galaxy and this sort of regime that's in place at the moment and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we keep going we keep going it's a hell of a lady <laughs> her files were all in order i ran them twice Let's start with the rest then i'm interested to see whether they drop off the medicine back or just hand them back over to niska How'd it go? She hit me. <laughs> Jane's still to out. Get him the infirmary. He's just heavy. Kept the engine running. We're good to go. We're not going. Not what? Not why? We're bringing the cargo back. Thank what? you. Let's go. Bring him back. <laughs> I'm for you guys. <laughs> what are you talking about? What about me, Scott? Won't they put him in more or less a killing mood? Those others need this more. 
Let's get it on the mules. My shuttle's faster. You already risked enough flying in there once. I don't want to get slapped around no more. As far as Nisku goes, you just have to explain to him the job went south and you return the money. You want to explain that's your chance. Oh, Nisku's here. Oh, he's big brute. The Mike Tyson looking ass with the tattoo. There we go, he's here. Off. We changed our minds. <laughs> you entered into an arrangement with Mr. Niska. There's no mind you. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong. I mean, we just, we can't take this job. So you just relax. We'll get you all the money Niska gave us up front. You return it to him and we'll call it even. And there is no even. All right. Oh! Once again, lucky we have a medic on board. This is going to be interesting if they deal with Mr. Niska again, because his talk was all about reputation. Now, if Malcolm's reputation is he hands back Mr. Niska's right hand man dead, we'll find out. <laughs> shot. I was aiming for his head. <laughs> Bloody Jane, man. I can drag it from here. We'll leave him just off the street. Notify the sheriff once we're in deep, deep space. Why not tell him in person? <laughs> Bought in 4K. I word of a ship not far out. Came looking. Didn't expect to find you coming back. Didn't expect to be coming. Nothing missing. Come on, Sheriff. Allow it. <laughs> Be a trooper back in town. These are tough times. A man can get a job. You might not look too close to what that job is. But a man learns all the details of a situation like ours. Well... Then he has a choice. He made that choice. Come on. I don't believe he does. Hey, that's the crates back to town. Make yourselves useful. That's that eye to eye. That's that respect. <laughs> From one leader to another. <laughs> now, this is all the money Niska gave us in advance. You bring it back to him, tell him the job didn't work out. We're not thieves. But we are thieves. Point is, we're not taking what's his. Now we'll stay out of his way as best we can from here on in. You explain that's best for everyone, okay? Keep the money. Use it to buy a funeral. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you go or how far you fly. I will hunt you down. The last thing you see will be my blade. Done. <laughs> oh, he saw the blades of the ship. <laughs> now this is all the money this oh, gave us in advance. <laughs> Round two <laughs> worked out. <laughs> Too fast thinking. Still enough change. Can't say you made a lifetime friend. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too worried about you. How's your sister? The same. In one moment she seems perfectly cogent, the next she speaks nonsense. It's like a child. Medic, on that planet, word came up that was returned. We didn't fly 86 million miles to track down a box of band-aids, Colonel. Oh, about We're the girl. For a girl. There we go. <laughs> this girl. Okay, there we have it. That's the end of episode two or episode one of Firefly, however you'd like to see it, titled The Train Job. Now, I thought that was a good episode, like decent, decent, decent. I feel like not as good as the first one or the intended first one, Serenity. Um, I feel like Serenity is much better as a first pilot, despite being double the length. I feel like this one was a bit more, having seen both now, I feel like this one was a bit more 
exposition heavy, a bit more tell. Um, and the other one, Serenity, was a bit more show, don't tell. Um, I don't know if you guys agree with me on that, but I like the certain visual cues we got in the first episode to explain the world building rather than getting the exposition at the beginning of this one, um, rather than getting certain bits of dialogue, you know, talking about um, Mao, his interaction with Faith, you know, God not being needed on the ship, um, you know, sort of the interaction, I think, with Shepard and uh, Inara as well about how long she's known Mao, um, certain bits of exposition as well surrounding River. Um, even though that was explained in the first episode with Simon telling the whole story what happened to her, um, I enjoyed more of the visual cues in the first episode revolving around the world building. Um, for instance, in the beginning of the episode, we got more of the independence war, um, even Malcolm's sort of uh, interaction with his faith, and then how that was explained later on in the episode, you know, certain visual cues surrounding the um, state of the other planets, you know, with Kaylee eating the strawberry, or even them going to the one with the um the deal at the end of the episode and they sort of explain how sort of the outer rim planets aren't as developed or as sort of um they're a bit more neglected by the alliance as the centered planets um and then what else did we have oh the reavers in the first episode as well i really enjoyed the in implementation of the reavers in the first episode and how joss whedon chose and uh, he basically did a double bait and switch with them where the first time you saw him, you got the sense, you know, these guys are really threatening. If our main crew and heroes are scared of them, um, then they're a real threat. And then they came back at the end of the episode and you're like, oh, they're going to be shown this time. But no, um, they got dealt with again. And I'm going to be interested to see how they reintroduce the Reavers into the uh, season or if they do. Um, but yeah, I much preferred... The first episode in terms of an initial pilot, you know, establishing the world building, you know, having the threat of the Reavers, having the threat of the Alliance, you know that River is sort of a wanted fugitive as well, you know, she's highly valuable of, um, because of what Simon said, you know, I thought I had a gift, but she, she possesses the gift, like, she is marked to the extreme, um, and she's extremely talented, and I, I much preferred, I think, the first episode, um, especially with Kaylee getting shot, um, just the, uh, double, uh, the double bluff or like the joke, uh, Malcolm pulled on Simon as well with, um, him telling him Kaylee was dead and whether he'd run or drop to his knees. Um, that was really clever as well. I know it was a joke, but I think I found the first episode a bit more entertaining. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm more numb to a few heist episodes now, um, in terms of like, cause I've watched so much Star Wars, uh, Rebels and Clone Wars, where you get a lot of these heist missions, um, of them having to do a certain job for a certain individual. Um, I think that's why I found the first episode more enticing and more, I guess, uh, um, how do I say it? I found the first episode to be much more better in terms of like them also having to make the decision of dealing with the Federal Alliance, um, individual as well. Uh, and Malcolm having to make that decision on the go at the end and having to take him out. Um, that was an interesting dynamic in the first episode, and he had that dynamic with Jane as well, giving him uh, the offer of how valuable River was. Um, so yeah, I think I enjoyed the ep first episode much more, but that doesn't take away from uh, the good things this episode did have as well. I, there's not much to fault in this episode. Um, in terms of a world-building aspect, you understand what the world is. Um, you understand what the Alliance is doing, you understand the state of the outer planets, and you got more of that this episode, obviously, with the bone de degenerating disease as well, and you get a sort of um, idea and grasp what the morals of our crew are, you know, they're the guy they're doing the job for, Niska, talked about, you know, I like your reputation, you don't ask what the job is, you don't ask what you're taking, and you would just complete it, but as soon as they found out what the state of the local town was, and what they ended up taking, which was the medicine, you know, they made that choice and it was the right choice in the end of the day. You know, we as the audience, you know, understand the situation and that's how, that's how we, I guess, respect our heroes. And that's a, like, yeah, you made the right call. You're our captain. Um, even though, you know, we've heard, or even though I saw last episode, he tends to be a bit more jokey, um, tends to make shitty decisions or not shitty decisions, but, um, you know, not treat everyone with the most respect. Um, and even lost a bit of faith, you still know he still um, has that moral ground of, you know, uh, what's best for humanity. Um, I rambled on too much at the end there. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed my reaction to episode two of 
Firefly titled The Train Job. I much preferred the first episode as a pilot, even though this was meant to be the initial pilot. Still had fun with it. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I cannot wait for episode three. As always, been your boy Lee Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace.